Throughout Henry VIII's reign as the King of England, the Tudor monarch would sentence thousands of people to death in many horrifying ways. One of the most brutal execution methods deployed by Henry was hanging, drawing and quartering. People were paraded behind a horse being dragged through the streets and they were then sentenced to a disgusting ordeal at places such as Tyburn in front of bloodthirsty crowds. But in 1531, there was a crowd that were gathered at Smithfield, a traditional place of burning at the stake, and they would witness an execution which would haunt them until the day they died. Richard Roos was brought from the Tower of London, and he was boiled alive in a large pot. It was a sign of Henry VIII's brutality, but it's believed the king had crafted Roos's execution and had ordered it to take place in such a way. But what is the story of this, and why did it happen? Henry VIII, around 1525, was infatuated with Anne Boleyn, who would become his second wife. But Anne refused to sleep with Henry before marriage. Because of this, he tried to appeal to the Pope for a divorce, and he would not give in to this. The Pope's refusal led to Henry trying to rally support for the annulment or divorce from Catherine of Aragon from many leading churchmen across England, but many were in opposition to it, including Bishop John Fisher, who was the Bishop of Rochester. Fisher was a vocal opponent of the divorce, and in public supported Catherine of Aragon. Fisher, for his actions and speeches, was unpopular with Henry VIII, and Anne Boleyn outwardly claimed how she despised him and how she hated him. It was said that Henry feared no one in England more than Fisher, as he had always defended Catherine without respect of persons. Fisher was later advised to not come to Parliament, where he was expected to speak out against Henry and Anne. However, in early 1531, around this very time, something incredibly suspicious occurred inside of Bishop John Fisher's household. It was the early afternoon of the 18th of February 1531 and Fisher had invited a number of guests for a meal. They were dining at his London house in Lambeth Marsh and something terrible happened. An act of Parliament described what happened saying, On the 18th day of February 1531, one Richard Roos of Rochester Cook, also called Richard Cook, did cast poison into a vessel full of yeast or Baum standing in the kitchen of the Bishop of Rochester's palace at Lambeth Marsh, by means of which two persons who happened to eat the pottage made with such yeast died. So the meals for the guests had been poisoned, and it's believed that Fisher was the target of this assassination attempt. A member of his household, a man called Bennett Kerwin, and a woman named Alice Tippett were killed after being mortally infected with poison from the porridge they ate. Fisher had not eaten any of the food, as it was believed he was fasting, but 17 of the party that were dining all became violently ill. Fisher's brother then ordered the quick arrest of Richard Roos, the cook, who had been preparing the meal. Fisher had been allegedly studying in his office also, and he told his household to dine without him but Roos the cook was then quickly captured after running from the kitchens, and he was then taken to the Tower of London. Inside the Tower of London, the infamous rack was found, a device which was horrific in forcing prisoners to confess to their crimes. Richard Roos was placed on the rack for obtaining his version of the events, and he was racked by the Tower's officials. Sometimes just seeing the rack was enough to elicit a confession, but whilst under torture, Roos stated that he tried to pull a prank on Bishop Fisher. He put inside the porridge what he believed was a laxative, and he described it as certain venom or poison. He said that the white powder would cause discomfort, but it would not kill. He also said that he did this to make the fellow servants very sick, without endangering their lives or doing them any harm. However, this became a deadly prank. But many have considered that Roos was persuaded to poison by someone else, and that Fisher was the alleged victim. It's been alleged that Henry VIII or Anne Boleyn's people could have approached Roos to do this, as Fisher was speaking out so much against them. 
Some have pointed the finger at the King or Anne Boleyn, as they were being criticised by Fisher, and he was becoming a staunch enemy of the King. The King, though, was very upset by the prospect of a poisoner on the loose, and he was a man who greatly feared being poisoned himself. Richard Roos was not tried in an open court, and because of this, he remained held in prison, and he was then sentenced to death through the word of Henry VIII. The King spoke to the House of Lords at length for an hour and a half, and he explained the poisonings. He made a lengthy speech, and he mentioned that Roos was to be condemned to death based on the evidence and testimony that had ultimately been obtained by torture. He was therefore condemned based on the King's words and interpretation of the events. Roos was judged by Parliament, and the final bill was written by Henry's councillors, and for this he was to be killed. Henry then ultimately changed the laws of treason to include poisoning, and to make sure this was punishable by boiling alive. The king insisted on this treatment, and the Act of Parliament said, The said poisoning be adjudged high treason, and that the said Richard Roos, for the said murder and poisoning of the said two persons, shall stand and be attained of high treason, and shall be therefore boiled to death without benefit of clergy, and that in future murder by poisoning shall be adjudged high treason, and the offender deprived of his clergy and boiled to death. It was believed that the boiling alive execution was a symbolic retribution, and the boiling idea was Roos being introduced to a pot of boiling matter, almost like he was the poison that he had also added. The sentence was carried out at Smithfield on the 15th of April 1532, and it took allegedly two hours for him to die. The Chronicle of Grey Friars in London stated that Roos was tied up in chains and then he was placed in an iron gibbet. He was secured and then he was lowered in and out of the boiling water three times until he was dead. The manner of his execution was completely brutal and it was said that it was done in this way to mock Roos's job as a cook and to add a sense of revenge. It was done to make sure he really did suffer. One account of the execution says, He roared mighty loud, and divers women, who were big with child, did feel sick at the sight of what they saw, and were carried away half dead. And other men and women did not seem frightened by the boiling alive, but would prefer to see the headsman at his work. But the death of Richard Roos did not lessen the threat against Bishop John Fisher. It was said that shortly after the poisoning, a number of shots from a cannon were sent through Fisher's house, and this damaged his roof. He was inside the study when this happened, and it was clear someone was trying to kill him. There was only one man at the top of the country who would have had power to issue the navy to use their cannons to strike inside of a busy London, and conveniently, they were aimed at his house. There were many people whose suspicion fell upon the king, and still today the execution of Richard Roos has remained a dark mark on the Tudor period, a time of great execution, torture and horror. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.